to, uh, uh, do you want to study? For the MGO, it's relatively easy. Okay? For this calculation, we, when we do phonon calculation, we, we do a, a real space supercell calculation. We use 128 atoms, and we use a group theory to figure out this, uh, this is an independent term. So instead of doing uh, a kind of like 400 by 400 constant matrix, we figure out there's only 52 independent terms. So we only calculate these 52 independent terms. The reason we use this uh, supercell te uh, technique is because we can easily expand this uh, supercell technique to extract the third order lattice harmonicity. So for the third order, instead of doing the full unharmonicity matrix with the 400 by 400 by 400, we figure out there's only about 3,000 uh, non-zero independent terms. So in our calculation, we only, only directly calculate those terms. We generate the, the full matrix based on the group theory. And there's another, in, uh, we use a cluster to do this one because those 3,000 plus terms are fully independent. So you can do this embarrassing parallelization and you, you send to the cluster and uh, then it should be done. And this, of course, depends on the symmetry. If you, start, uh, if you calculate the much complex system, multi-component with a low symmetry, uh, the, the number of calculations should increase uh, based on the symmetry. Another important issue that we realized is comparable to the, to the size effect that we talk about in the real space technique. And we need to pay attention to the convergence of uh, brilliant zone sampling. This brilliant zone sampling actually is, uh, is, is more sensitive to the size because we got involved instead of just one brilliant zone, we actually have a three phonon per set. So you sample the brilliant zone from uh, the, the, the first phonon, second phonon, phonon. And uh, you have to satisfy both the, uh, the momentum conservation. So what we find out if you use a four by four by four very sparse sampling, you get the calculation rather quick, but that result far from, uh, far from converge. So that kind of gave you the idea about the size effect in the real space because four by four by four Q point sampling is kind of equivalent to the four by four by four supercell in the, in the real space. So in this case, we use it's a 16 by 16 by 16 uh, Q point sampling and uh, each Q point will have uh, six phonon branches and, uh, we, and we also use a group theory to, to, to derive that there's only 100 45 irreducible Q point, so that's how many number of phonon lifetime we need to calculate independently. Again, this calculation, how expensive it is, it, it, it is not that expensive for the two atom cell like uh, MGO, okay? but the problem here is a scale very bad. It's a, it's a, it's a scale uh, uh, at n cube, so that's why that we're going to show this one for the, for, the, for, the, for the MGO, we actually can do with our local facility. But for the Pearl Sky, which is uh, 20 atom per unit cell, so it's a 10 times more expensive, so that translates to the N to the cube. So, that, so for that one, we use a teragrid supercomputing facility. And also, because of this, we, we, at this stage, we do not solve this one self-consistent Boltzmann equation. We actually use this so-called single-mode excitation approximation. So this one reduced to actually the, uh, the, 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 kin the kinetic model. Okay, here's the result. And uh, this is our recent work on the MGO. Okay, what I'm plotting here is uh, the contribution of the conductivity from each individual phonon mode. Uh, this one is a log scale. So the message here actually is a low-frequency acoustic mode at the main heat carrier. The, those are the most important ones, okay? Because they contribute, this is an analysis that the old acoustic mode contribute to more than 80, 90% uh, of the conductivity. So those optical modes, they are important. They get involved in the phonon scattering, but they, because they have a relatively low group velocity, they don't contribute that much. This is, and we, this is something that we, 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 we can directly do calculation over a wide temperature and uh, uh, density range. And we find that very interesting that actually 
the, the, the temperature dependent for the constant density. This is not constant pressure. This is the point that I want to make. Actually, it's a constant density. This one fits nicely with this linear uh, cloud. And uh, it doesn't go to the, uh, the origin because we consider the isotope effect. Okay. So from there, we can actually generate the, the model of the density and the temperature dependent of, uh, of, a, of a, a, the lattice thermal conductivity of uh, MGO. This, the message here, I want this no extrapolation. We, we, we do direct calculation over the range, over the temperature and the pressure condition that is relevant to the earth science. So there's no extrapolation. So this one, is, uh, it will help us to, 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 to better understand the, 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 the property at the high pressure. And this is how do we compare with the experiment and only, limit, uh, only the result at relative low pressure are available. This is a comparison with the, with the, with the data of, uh, of uh, uh, ambient pressure. And this is a comparison with the, the, the pressure derivative up to uh, only about the 10 gig, uh, 5 gigapascal. We are in good agreement. Now we know that the MGO is only count 20% of the lower mantle. The dominant part actually is uh, perovskite. So uh, Xiao Li at, uh, at the UCLA, we started the, the calculation on the distant perovskite. Again, this is uh, because of the scale effect. And uh, we, we have to use the, uh, the supercomputing facility. This is the grant that, the, that the, uh, we put together and uh, got it and Xiao Li carry out the calculation. This is a comparison because, uh, between the perovskite and the post perovskite. The, 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 the Prost guy and the MGO. Okay. And this is a result similar to what we got uh, that in um, uh, we find, uh, again, this is a linear uh, relation. And this is a, one of the latest uh, data that Xiaoli sent me that uh, shows that uh, uh, what is uh, uh, the, 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 to connect with the uh, earth science. And this is an estimation based on the geotherm what is data there, and this work is still in preparation. Okay. okay, so we are now in the next stage is we try to put iron there. So what we do here is we try to use a virtual crystal approximation. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to just give a brief idea. This is a, just a simple test for the purpose of, to show that the virtual crystal approximation work. So there's no LD plus U there. It's just a just test to show that with the calculation with the Linear, uh, there's a spin polarized system that we actually can do this virtual crystal correctly. And then, and we also want to use the, uh, uh, the, 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 to count the, the additional phonon scattering come from the, 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 the uh, ion and the magnesium disorder because now we have a solid solution. We do not have a crystal now. Okay, okay so this is my last slide, and uh, this kind of uh, what I kind of a uh, my vision that what will help the community, the first one we need to think about uh, what kind of organization will help us. So we are not the first group to do this, so we need to learn from others, from other successful examples like a Compress or CIG. And the, for the hardware, I would say that nowadays that uh, for, for, for those of us who make living by doing computation, we, also, we all have our local facility and we can get certain support from the state level, university level. And now this uh, TerraGrid is really helpful. So, my opinion is that since uh, NSF have funded TerraGrid, it's difficult for us to justify that we need something that's the uh, hardware. But we do need a lot of help from the software development. Using this uh, thermal transport uh, uh, code as, as example, they kind of like at the beginning, a lot of groups are doing this one and the people use different approach. Each and every approach have a strength and the limitation. And uh, so they are all kind of a being the, at the stage that we are developing it. So we need to really have a collaboration there, have a benchmark comparison the test, and also maybe some collaboration integrate together. And for those development, uh, uh, we physicists develop a red code, but the code that we, we, we write is uh, kind of like a, a physics kind of a code. So we would like to have some applied mathematician or software engineer actually help us to make the code as easy for the community to use. And also this is a, this is the issue of community building. We all collaborate with uh, uh, different people, but this maybe we can have a kind of a uh, kind of like a platform for our to better interact 
and uh, try to understand the, 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 the strength and the, and the limitation from different perspectives. And also, when we have a kind of a mature product, we have a code, and we'd like to distribute over the community, and I, I would like to provide the, the, the user uh, support. And uh, uh, as Renata mentioned, that for the, uh, the DFT plus U calculation, at the beginning, it's not somebody can just take the code, do the calculation, so you have to have certain support. So this platform maybe provides a mechanism for us to provide those kind of support. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, you are co-author of this one. So this one, so we only had one paper on the uh, conductivity of MGO maybe 10 years ago, right? So this year, we actually have a three paper. Yeah, so the, they all from, uh, 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 they, they all work on the MGO. As I said, it's, uh, one is from using the nine equilibrium uh, molecular dynamics. The other one is using the, uh, it's a phonon theory, but they use kind of like a, a, a equilibrium molecular dynamic to abstract the 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 the, the phonon lifetime. Okay, I'm more familiar with that technique, so let me just come a little bit on that technique. So that actually is a nice idea. Okay, you use a molecular dynamic to extract the phonon lifetime. So the advantage of that one over the 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 the, the method that we use is that they don't do truncation. They count the third order, fourth order, everything there. Okay. So that is the appealing part. But there's also a problem with that approach is the size effect. Okay. So what they can do is a relative small cell. So basically, they limit the, the three phonon process equivalent to very small Q point sampling. And they also suffer with the same issue that I mentioned with the time scale decay. So they actually use a a numerical approximation, they actually added a faster decay to make things de uh, truncate. Then they take away that one. Basically, they add something, then take away something. It is a good, it's a very smart idea. But in practice, you got to be careful. You kind of like get a free lunch. If you don't have to run that long, then you get something, you should be sensitive. But the issue there is that you use a too big number to subtraction to get a small number. So numerically, that one I have some concern. And also, they, they didn't do the full brilliant zone, this kind of irreducible calculation. They actually did a couple of them. Then they adopt a model that developed in the 60s. It's a connect, uh, kind of like related the, the, the phonon lifetime with the frequency. And then they extract that the proportionality then apply to all the other ones. Uh, there's nothing wrong to do that one, but that one requires a lot of testing. Okay. But, exactly. And uh, also, that one was developed in the 60s. That depends on, maybe it applies to MGO. Maybe that one worked perfectly. It may not work in the pearl sky. It may not work in the, this a complex mineral system. So that approach is what I, I have no experience with the non-equilibrium molecular dynamics. As I said, in principle, this is a really uh, the most straightforward method, but from my point of view, it's, it's difficult to implement, and uh, it, it, the, the cross section and the, the, the length of this one. Uh, from the literature, there's a one common is that it's a, it's, a, it's a temperature gradient. Because in the real one, we have degree over kilometer, but in the simulation, we over a nano site, uh, and we have a huge this one. So I don't have a, uh, experience on that one. So. That's an, so, but each technique, it's kind of like a, we, we can improve that one. So this is the first kind of like a starting point. So we can actually, this is a, what the community is, a, is a good about. So at this a starting point, we also talk about that the European community actually uh, contributed more in the code development. Maybe this is our chance and we can bring people together with a different kind of approach. Then, the, then we, we just kind of a test and compare 
to understand the, the strength and the weakness, and the, maybe each the different technique will complement.